All right. Very good. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Monica on Empower Your Health, Empower Your Life TV, where we bring you inspiring, um, outstanding leaders, community builders, healers, uh, influencers in the area of um, health of our individuals and communities. And I just want to thank you so much for your presence here. I know there's a lot going on that uh, wants your attention, uh, but I am very positive that today um, the guest that we have um, is going to bring you true um, value. And I am very humbled and very grateful for uh, his being here on the show. And I'm going to, without much further ado, let me introduce our guest today, um, Dr. Jerry Rivera Duhenio, PhD. He's a, he's a quantum mechanics researcher with a PhD in natural medicine from the International Quantum University for Integrative Medicine, Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, Dr. Jerry specializes in advanced scalar plasma energy technologies, quantum morphogenetic field physics, and the larger paradigm of science known as the 15 dimensional unified field physics. Uh, Dr. Jerry has lectured and presented his research findings at multiple conferences and is the founder of the Biogenesis Conference and the president of the GC Rivera Foundation, a nonprofit medical surgical autism organization. As well, he's also involved in various other outstanding initiatives. Um, in the year 2000, Dr. Jerry Rivera underwent a powerful near-death experience that shifted his consciousness from a 3D dimensional to a multi-dimensional perceptual understanding of first creation physics and the formation of morphogenetic scalar fields. Unlike modern day researchers, who based the theories on three-dimensional experiments. During his near-death experience, Dr. Jerry experienced the true nature of dark matter, morphogenetic fields, which hold the blueprint upon which units of consciousness create our holographic reality. And, you know, I reached out to Dr. Jerry Rivera because um, he addresses topics, as is my belief, that are at the, of the utmost importance for the human collective right now. And he brings knowledge about the nature of consciousness and the importance of consciousness and healing, about the multidimensional nature of the human being, and unlocking the human potential and the dormant DNA strands. And you know, he does it in a way that is clear, scientific, free of new age jargon, and it's experiential. It's based on his own experience. So I want to welcome Dr. Jerry Rivera Dupeño. I'm deeply humbled, very honored for your presence here. Um, and I cannot wait for what we can learn from you. Uh, I know you're <laughs> going to bring in tremendous value to our listeners. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. And thank you for having me. And I want to welcome all your listeners live and later on uh, in recording. Yes. Hmm. Well, welcome. Um, so tell us, um, how is it going today? What's on your mind right now? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'm just, uh, first of all, very grateful for you asking me to be on. You know, it's not, it's not every day that a, you know, just someone outside of my sphere of influence can, can uh, let's just say, access my, my fields. Uh, I put up a very, a, a very protective filtered uh, bioenergetic field uh, and you uh, somehow, and I thankfully uh, got through and, you know, I'm, I'm able to talk about anything really today. Uh, today, I'm going to answer any of your questions, any of the questions that you may have for me, for your listeners, as well as yourself. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, um, you know, I felt, like I said, a deep connection with your work um, and very curious, actually. And I feel that these topics, um, some of them that, that you raised that I became aware of are just of utmost experience, you know, importance to our collective. Um, and that there is a big yearning in, 
in the humanity right now to learn about um, advanced technologies that we have access to. We may not be aware of it yet. And I know you bring that. So I would love to hear more about those topics. And let's start, if you can tell us um, about your background or where you come from, how this work started for you. Yeah, so, you know, at a, at a very early age, uh, I had a affinity to uh, things as uh, space travel, uh, the cosmos, uh, near-death experience. In fact, uh, when I was nine years old or 10, uh, my parents uh, entered me into a public speaking contest. And uh, the topic that I chose was uh, Life After Life, which was or is a book uh, written by Dr. Raymond Moody. Uh, and he did his whole uh, research on near-death experience. And at age nine or 10, that was the topic of my, uh, my speech. And I actually won. <laughs> and, uh, you know, from a very young age, uh, I had that affinity for outer body experiences. Uh, and uh, in 2000, about 10 years ago, really, uh, September of 2000, I actually uh, had an overdose and I had a massive coronary heart attack. And I was actually dead for several minutes. And during that, I call it a death experience or transition of consciousness experience. That is where I was able to experience myself as, as our true nature, which is consciousness or energy. And in that experience of non-time, I was able to bring back a massive download of, of data information that took, you know, years for me to, to download. It took, I'd say about at least six years for it to actually yeah. download. Think of a massive zip file in your, in your heart, like mm -hmm. an email. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Wow. This is powerful. And do you feel like you actually, um, there was something that you were programmed with to come in to receive that knowledge and that experience or well, that it was a choice. How do you look at that um, in terms of your role, you know, bringing this zip file? Right. So, you know, the, 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 the physical 3D person that you see here, mm -hmm. you know, is but one of many aspects of myself, right? So mm -hmm. if you, if you, believe or, or you know that consciousness is the foundation of existence and everything down steps from, from higher consciousness down to the material, then we have, we have many aspects of ourself that are much greater than this physical 3D body. And, you know, at the time in 2000, I, you know, when I, when I died, I didn't want to come back. That, that portion of my consciousness did not want to return because the, the first thing that you, you, you realize, and unfortunately everyone that's going to be listening to this is going to transition. The one thing I want you to remember is that you can still think. So when you, when you die or you, when you go through that transition, you can still think you're still conscious and you still have the awareness of who you are. And when I had that uh, awakening or that awareness, uh, that consciousness that was, that was running the show up to 2000 didn't want to come back into this prison of a body. So it was my, it was my higher aspects of my conscious identity that came back, that came in and said, okay, we're, we're going to take over from here. So it was me at those higher dimensional levels or aspects of me that came in to finish the contract that I signed up for. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you feel that was a contract that you had a mission to bring this. Um, yes. Yeah, Do you, so I know you talk about incension that really got my um, attention a lot because you talk about how, you know, the multidimensionality of our consciousness uh, it connects with the physical body, but that obviously is just a little piece of it. Um, how do you see us integrating this knowledge? How do you help people or how do you bring that 
more into awareness for the collective that you know we are that multi-dimensional uh, being in right. the physical body and how do we make the best out of it because obviously you know if you're out there you may not want to come back right so one mm -hmm. thing i want to i want to just remind everyone is that that we are consciousness having a biochemical experience mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so what that means is this experience that we're, uh, that we're actually going through in this three-dimensional reality is a biochemical experience. It is not our true nature, which is energy, or for that matter, uh, pre-matter pre ether, okay? Because everyone talks about consciousness, but they can't even explain what consciousness is. They just say, oh, consciousness is spirit, or, or consciousness is your light body, no. Consciousness is pre-matter ether energy. For Let's just set the record straight. That is what consciousness is. The whole entire cosmos is made up of consciousness. Source or God or whatever you want to call it is made up of pre-matter ether energy. So that is what consciousness is. So let's bring it down to what we what we are experiencing in this reality okay um, my my mission you know as i came back into this physical body is one and one thing only and that is pretty much if of a salvage or a rescue operation mission which means if i can spark someone's dna by my actions my words and they've, their consciousness expands with that activation of their DNA, then I've done my job. Mm -hmm. Because what I want everyone to realize is, that, is this. Everyone that talks about ascension has no idea what the hell is going on in this galaxy. Because this galaxy, unfortunately, is a black hole, finite life galaxy, which in probably 210 years, which will become a quarantined galaxy, mm -hmm. okay? So mm -hmm. when they're talking about ascension, they really don't understand that we're in a distorted galaxy that has a black hole at the center of it. Everyone dies in this galaxy, mm -hmm. okay? But there are other matrices or other galaxies that, are, that have white hole instead of black hole at the mm -hmm. center of their galaxy. So they're, it's, it's giving energy instead of vampiring energy. So mm -hmm. really, when someone talks about ascension, they have no idea what the hell they're talking about because we don't live in an eternal life matrix. We live in a finite life matrix. Mm -hmm. So what they really should be talking about is incension, mm -hmm. yes. which is going inside or inward because at the core of every human person, we have our chakras, yeah? And mm -hmm. our chakras are our internal stargates that can get us out of here to mm -hmm. other matrices or dimensional realities that are more eternal life based. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, it does. And I mean, to me, it's that we, we contain that consciousness within our um, DNA and uh, going inwards and reconnecting with those elements of consciousness that are inside of us is, is the way out. If that's making sense. But I'm curious, can you tell us more about uh, the DNA and what does that mean to spark with somebody's DNA? Right. So, you know, most, most of the Homo sapien 2, which, which is us, the modern humans, we're not even considered the Homo sapien 1. We are actually Homo sapien 2 mm -hmm. because we're, we're carbon based. The original Homo sapien 1 was silica based. That's the okay. first thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I talk about the DNA, I'm talking about the original eternal life human was a 24 to 48 strand being. So in our DNA right now, we have two to three strands that actually code for protein. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's only, there's only, we're, we're originally supposed to be 12, 24 or 48 strand beings. What happened to those other strands? Why were right. they disconnected? Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. if you look at the DNA, 
as equivalent to your chakras or dimensions, that means most of humanity is only walking around and experience reality from the second or third dimension or their second or third chakras. So when I talk about sparking the other DNA, I'm talking about morphogenetically helping those people to access those other higher DNA strands or dimensions through mm -hmm. eternal life frequency, mm -hmm. which is different than just frequency, distorted frequency. Can you tell us more about that, please? Sure. So yeah. you have eternal life frequency, which is based mm -hmm. on which is based on a base twelve mathematics source code, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So meaning everything is in the in twelves, uh, mm -hmm. where you have current mathematics or uh, current technology, which is base ten. So it's missing two, you know, very two aspects of the mathematics or or expansion ratio. So that's what I mean by, you know, eternal life frequency, base 12, regular frequency or distorted mutated frequency, base 10. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, have you looked into the history of this and how this distortion happened and if there is a meaning to it for us as, as humans? Wow, well, uh, why this happened I mean, that, that, that mm -hmm. is another interview or another podcast. <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all, all I can say is, yeah. uh, and first, first of all, I want to ask everyone to forgive me if I'm going to offend anyone today, okay? Because that's not my, my intention. Mm -hmm. But what I will share with you is this. You can believe anything that you want to. Your belief systems dictate what you experience when you transition. So if you're a Buddhist, you're going to see Buddha. If you are Christian, you're going to see Jesus. Uh, if you're a Muslim or Islam, you're going to see Muhammad, right? However, at the core of every, uh, let's just say, uh, religion is what's known as the truth. And that truth is love. That is the un, unmistakable, unquantifiable, uh, uh, let's just say, energy that is uh, what came from source. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So why this all happened and how, you know, humans, uh, you know, lost their ability to live from 800 to a few thousand years now we're only living what a mm -hmm. hundred years if we're lucky mm -hmm. is due to a purposeful insidious plan that was orchestrated many billions of years ago in order to hijack or, or vampire energy mm -hmm. that's what it that's what it really boils down to if you take a bird's eye view of reality Mm -hmm. or you take you don't have to do that just take two human beings and forget about looking at male female male male female female just take a look at them as quanta of energy mm -hmm. and if you look at someone just as energy and then if you let's just say you go to a party and you see a a guy trying to hit on a woman or a man trying to hit on a man, you will see a quantum of energy trying to vampire and consume that mm -hmm. energy. And that's what it has to do with. It has to do with energy. And unfortunately, we live in a vampiric matrix, which we have to consume food, water, energy to exist. Mm -hmm. But that is not the natural organic way of existing there is an alternative option and that is without consuming other living things to exist mm -hmm. so yeah. it, it has to do with the whole cosmic drama that I really can't go mm -hmm. into because it'll take yeah. days yes I mean to me you know so we also have to recognize that as human beings right now in this matrix we are um, consuming and we are vampirizing we're taking stuff in order to survive 
Uh, yeah. But um, as much as perhaps we are being oppressed by certain agendas, and you know, this is again like this is a belief system, right? So everybody has to uh, decide of what is their point of view on that. But, Absolutely. Um, yes, and uh, you know, my my question, I always ask myself: so, what is the teaching? What's the learning that we can get, especially in this? particular situation you know we're going through some uh some social changes and, and yes. there's a lot of upheaval and i think that uh massively people are also searching for for inception or trying to break break out of those patterns um so what is your what's your thought on that well let's just put it this way you know this time that we're in right now this current space-time coordinate mm -hmm. we are going through a paradigm shift right. and you can either view it as oh man this is bad and i just want to go back to the old way of living mm -hmm. or you can view it as a chance for a reset but everyone talks about oh we're going to reset now no you must do a consciousness reset if you really uh -huh. truly want to reset right so that means you will in order to do a consciousness reset you must allow consciousness to be the foundation of everything mm. whether it's healing manifestation everything because you're not going to be able to reset unless you do it from a consciousness perspective first if you try any other reset without having consciousness as the foundation, it'll never take, it'll never last. So what I'm saying is, you know, I don't know, I don't profess to know everything, but what I do know of, I've experienced through direct cognition or direct experiential knowing. And that, that direct cognition is all about feeling, feeling what needs to be done instead of thinking mm -hmm. yeah. right so beautiful yes uh, th this is i mean that's the key right consciousness and i think a this, lot of people don't understand what it means because it's right. the word that everybody uses and it's like what does it really mean right, right? it's an experience of tell us more about healing how do we activate how do we learn to be healing beings again well, you know, you know, there, there's a technique that I'll share with you now mm -hmm. that, that everyone can do that's listening to this. And, and it is a, it's an organic, uh, not just ma manifestation technique, but it's a materialization technique. You know, mm -hmm. people talk about manifestation all day long, but they have no, yeah. they have no real realization what manifestation is. Manifesting is actually dealing with the light body and it has to do with intention, Right. But you can intend all day long until the stars burn out. But if you don't know how to materialize, you're wasting your time. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's about manifesting, but materializing that which you want to create. So it comes down to what you were talking about is feeling. So if everyone wants to close their eyes, mm -hmm. right below the thymus gland, there is a spot right below the thymus gland. It's an energy point. And just focus your attention on that point. And you know, you could just feel around at the breastbone. And I want you to put the feeling of whatever it is that you want to create, whether it's a more abundance, better health, a better relationship, whatever it is right below the thymus at the breastbone. I want you to focus your attention, close your eyes, and I want you to feel the feeling of whatever it is that you want to create. As if you already have it. Next, I want you to take a deep inhale, and on the exhale, send that feeling to your tailbone, to the coccyx bone, if you will. At that point, focus all your awareness on your tailbone, and I want you to turn that feeling into the emotion, the energy in motion of that which you want to create. 
So really feel that emotion. I take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, I want you to send that emotion of whatever it is that you want to create to the area of your spleen, which is the left side of your body, just underneath your rib cage, left side. Here, that emotion becomes the thought of that which you want to create. Really harbor or hold the thought of that which you want to create. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, send that thought all the way up to the rear of your head, which is the fontanelle area, the rear of your skull. Exhale. And that thought of whatever it is that you want to create becomes the idea or the idea crystallization of that which you want to create. And when you're ready, just let it go to the universe, open your eyes. And uh, that has everything to do with what you were talking about, actually mm -hmm. connecting to the feeling, becoming feeling more than mm -hmm. thought. But that is the actual organic materialization process that I invite everyone to experience. Oops. Beautiful. Thank you so much for this. This is a huge gift. And um, so we, ha we have our physical bodies, we have our feeling capacity, and that's, that's a vessel of manifestation. Mm -hmm. So um, how, um, tell us more, if you can, about... Um, your, the technologies that you are working with to, um, in the area of healing. Right. So, you know, many people, they, 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 they do believe and feel that they can heal themselves and there's, there is things as spontaneous healing, which occurs. Uh, however, uh, that's very few and far between. Yeah. And unfortunately, the current modern man was genetically tampered with, okay? Right. No matter what your belief system is, ask yourself why in the Bible, Moses and Methuselah were living 800 to a few thousand years, but now we only live maybe a hundred years. And in the ancient uh, cuneiform tablets of the Sumerians, you had kings living 30,000 to 50,000 years right? There was a genetic manipulation that was done to the human genome about 250 to 260,000 years ago that changed everything. So if a pre-ancient technology or genetic engineering or tampering occurred 260,000 years ago, mm -hmm. then you will need a combination of consciousness and some type of technology that can help mitigate those mutations. And I created, or when I had that uh, transition of consciousness experience or what you call it an NDE, near-death experience, mm -hmm. I was able to bring back information that had everything to do with uh, scale our energy, consciousness, and the reprogramming of the morphogenetic field of our what, what scientists erroneously call junk DNA. Mm -hmm. I call it potential DNA. And I just, I, I just combined technology of people that were more brilliant than I, Nikola Tesla, Antoine Priori, Dr. Royal Reif, et cetera, et cetera, Constantine Mile, uh, and I was able to put it together, mm -hmm. uh, a technology called the Rasha technology. A Rasha means a dark matter body, and it has a, a tech, it's a technology that communicates to our DNA. Hmm. Okay. Wow, a lot of questions <laughs> that are coming up for me. Uh, very briefly, if you don't uh, mind, for, for those who are not in physics, can you define scalar technology? I mean, uh, energy. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, 99.9% uh, .9 of the mathematicians, scientists, uh, physicists, they all have it all wrong. They 
when they talk about scalar, they're talking about less than 1% of the effect of scalar. So if you have electromagnetism, so this is scalar energy 101. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have electromagnetism, you have electric, which is energy expansion or oscillation. You have magnetism, which is energy contraction or holding. That is energy. That's the definition of that, okay? Mm -hmm. Scalar is energy plus information. Mm -hmm. And scalar energy is the potential of electric and or magnetism. So the foundation of the mechanics of creation is scalar energy. Scalar energy is the fundamental aspect of the mechanics of creation. That is why Nikola Tesla was able to tap into the electrical component or the electrical side of the scalar field and give us free energy, wireless transmission mm -hmm. of energy. Whereas Professor Dr. Constantine Mile works with the magnetic side of the scalar field, and that has to do with the language of our DNA. Our DNA communicates mm -hmm. through the magnetic side of the scalar field, right. not biophotonic, which most mm -hmm. scientists say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes. I just really briefly, uh, I'm a myofascial release therapist. If you're, I don't know if you have any familiarity with that, but this is how we view the fascial system, meaning the connective tissue or the real, the nature of the body. It's, it's electromagnetic yes. and it communicates not through a nervous system, it communicates through a, a magnetic resonance. And um, that's, I'm not a physicist, I really don't know much about science, but um, that is a uh, a truly powerful form of communication that is totally overlooked by, by today's medicine and just wanted to drop it in. Well, you know, the reason why mm -hmm. we our, our DNA communicates via the magnetic portion mm -hmm. of the scalar field is in the middle of our double helix. Yes. There is, there is what's known as the major groove in science, also known as the magnetic groove. It's made up of of phosphates with a, of, with a neg negative charge or magnetic charge. So that is why our DNA transmits and receives via the magnetic portion of the scalar mm -hmm. field, because we have that magnetic major groove in between our double helix. Hmm. Wow, this is fascinating. And, um, and the, upper, the possibilities that you're opening with that. You know, free energy that brings me back to, to our true nature with the 12 strands and, and uh, that we are not made naturally as humans to be vampirizing energy. We are uh, there to exist in the universe. I, my belief is in a universe where energy is free, where we express our uh, beingness rather than getting energy and then being um, depleted of energy. Does that make yeah. sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so just to drop in that image, because I, my sense is that we need to talk about it. If we don't talk about it, that it's not going to be materializing on a bigger scale. Um, um, there must be ways to unlock those uh, images and those feelings for us, or maybe those remembrances, if that makes any sense. It does. Um, um, so can, can you please tell us more about the Rasha technology and how this works and what, what can it, you know, offer to people more in sort of a, um, a practical dimension? Yeah. So if people, uh, your listeners can go to www.therasha.com. Uh, there is a plethora of information, uh, right. about the technology. Uh, but the, you know, like I said before, we're using uh, resonant frequency, Rife frequency, Hall de Clark frequency, eternal life frequency based on the source spiral, uh, and other types of frequencies. Uh, you know, uh, we have frequencies that neutralize 5G, electrosmog, and geopathic stress, mm -hmm. which everyone is 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 in a in a uh, let's say confusion nowadays about that and, and panic, if you will. So mm -hmm. the technology is a stress relief and relaxation 
technology that has the ability to harmonize your autonomic nervous system in a matter of minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you believe or you, you know, you, you do believe that uh, inflammation causes uh, or, or stress causes inflammation and inflammation causes disease. Well, if you are reducing stress, you reduce inflammation, mm -hmm. thereby you reduce dis-ease. Mm -hmm. So it's a technology that has everything to do with, you know, allowing the, the human to reclaim their innate, organic, original capability of true human potential, which is we are the original innate eternal life technology. Humans, mm -hmm. we are the technology. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Rasha simply is a co-creative uh, consciousness technology that co-creates with us, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. human, the original that's, technology. That's almost like it gives you a little push so you can actually get into gear and um, realize that what's going on, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's yeah. gonna be, there are gonna be people that are saying, oh, you know, we don't need technology to help us. You're right. In mm -hmm. an eternal life, yes. undistorted galaxy and matrix, we don't need technology to help us because we are consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. But I hate to break the news to you. We live in a distorted matrix. We live in a finite life galaxy. We are absolutely bombarded by finite life technologies, the Fibonacci, the Phi Ratio, the Golden Mean, the Yin Yang, they're all finite life death science technologies that everyone thinks that it's the, you know, oh, it's, it's you know, the new agers, they're like, oh, this is it, oh, you know, flower of life. No, the flower of life is actually the flower of artificial life. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a base 10 mathematics. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there is this, uh, we need to tap and kind of ignite that potential within us. And where, where do you see humanity going if we were actually to um, be able to do that? Get out of here. Be able to leave this prison planet, which it is. We've all been here for at least 3,333 mm -hmm. lifetimes to get out of here because this matrix is going to be quarantined in 210 years and everything eventually will go down the black hole at the center of this galaxy. The idea is to, when you transition is to have the conscious choice to do whatever you want to do. If you want to come back and reincarnate, have at it. If you want to leave this <laughs> matrix and traverse and go with the, your, your conscious evolution to other matrices, you can choose that too. But it's all about choice because we are living, you're, everyone that's here is living the experience that is a consequence of our choice. Yes. And all I'm saying is make that conscious choice when mm -hmm. you transition. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges for us to be making conscious choices right now? Uh, our belief system, mind control, uh, you know, you have mind control manipulated, uh, you know, knowledges or religions or, you know, things of that nature that bind us, you know, to a certain mm -hmm. reality because our thoughts create our reality. Our right. thoughts are scale, our energy in motion. So, you know, Honestly, your belief system will dictate where you go mm. and what you experience. Right. So, you know, if you had somebody maybe watching and listening to what you say and they kind of get interested and they don't know where to take this at right now, what would you advise them? I would advise you to go within, take some time to meditate or just quiet, just go into a quiet space and just connect with you at the higher levels. You don't need a master guru, angel, or expert to tell you right. who you are mm -hmm. or what you need to do. 
go within and go vertical. I call it going vertical. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you go to yourself at those higher levels because mm -hmm. you are there. If you are here listening to this podcast, that means you have aspects of yourself at those higher levels. And that's the, probably the best mm -hmm. thing I can, I can share with your, your mm -hmm. listeners. Yes, and perhaps it's not about following a certain technique or, you know, uh, uh, following a certain whatever meditation. It's actually just quieting yourself and with that intention of going vertical and connecting with the higher self. And that Absol is, right? Absolutely. Then we, then we take back the control because I am the source of what's happening right now for me and not uh, following a guru or, or right? Absolutely. And here, here's mm -hmm. one thing I'll also share with you and your listeners. You know, it's, it's, it's not just about, you know, um, if you really want to know the truth or you want to feel, sense the truth, mm -hmm. close your eyes and listen to the energy behind my words or behind anybody's words. Close your eyes and listen and feel, sense the energy mm -hmm. behind the words because that is where you'll find intention and truth. Mm -hmm. That is where you will find feeling of whatever it is that you want to, you know, uh, uh, right. Uh, experience. Right. And, um, and that takes us back to feeling and be that as human beings, we have this incredible capacity of feeling and not just using our intellectual brain. And, and that's something for me, that's something that has to be reclaimed. Um, and powerfully. So, um, wow, this is, um, there's just a lot, <laughs> but you know what, what it, what it gave me to, you know, a thought is that, you know, we talked about multidimensionality and you know, what you are presenting right now, it is multidimensional and that there's many different aspects to it. And I, if for everybody who's listening, if they get drawn to or, or interested, you know, if you just start to feel and what is, what's from this information, what is resonating with me and my feel and can I, accept that and bring it into me that's you know that's the enrichment would you, would you say that's that absolutely mm -hmm. yes wow. it does. fantastic um so it, i do you have a few more minutes to ask him your questions <laughs> yes yes no okay, yeah right <laughs> no I, I still wanted to um, um ask a little more about um the current situation and what is going on and okay um, apart from, you know, taking this as an awakening call, because I think that's what's happening. It's like, you know, it's a wake up call. And, um, but how, um, first of all, how can we best uh, protect ourselves from the external information that's distor distorting um, our belief systems even further? And how can we uh, turn it around and use it to our advantage as, you know, in our evolution? Right. So, you know, one way you can filter, you know, the, all of this distorted information, like I said, is to uh, embrace or engulf yourself with the frequencies of you at the higher levels. And I'm not just talking about 5D, which everyone erroneously talks about, 6D, 7D. I'm talking about... 12th dimensional frequency and higher, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we live in a 15 dimensional time sphere, okay? A sphere of 15 dimensions, okay? Not just 5D, 7D, 9D. I mean, you have, you have physicists at MIT and Columbia University already saying, yes, we live in a 10 to 11 uh, dimensional uh, uh, reality, yeah? So, there are a lot of people smarter than me that are also saying that we live in higher dimensions than just 5D, yeah? So the thing I would just say is just uh, imagine yourself in a pillar of pale silver frequency, which is the frequency of 12th dimensional uh, and higher, and close your eyes and always just put yourself in that pillar. Like think of like a, a Roman pillar, uh, like, like six feet in circumference, bathe yourself in pale silver energy or frequency that in itself because color is frequency frequency mm -hmm. is energy it will it will put a filter around you 
and help filter out all the distorted uh, disinformation. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Yes, because that's all we need, right? We don't need to uh, uh, reach out for any, I mean, we need the technologies to, uh, again, give us a push, but we also can use our incredible power of, of visualization. Absolutely. That's the technology that we Absolutely. have right now and right here. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, can you uh, tell us a little about how people can reach you and if they're interested in the Rapture project? I know you mentioned the website, but is there a specific way that you know you, you invite people to try it or uh, yeah. they're connected? Sure, they could just reach me at uh, Jerry J E R E at the Rasha R A S H A dot com. That's my email. Send me an email, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Mm -hmm. Yes, to use the technology that you are uh, that you have developed. And um, wow! So um, if you were like you, you gave us so much and many different tools right now, and I think again, it's like it's, it's a package loaded with information. So it's all about you know receiving that and allowing your your system to receive whatever is resonating. That's, Correct. You know. So it may sound overwhelming, but I feel like it's actually not everybody gets what they're open to and what they need right now in this moment. Absolutely. And if you were to tell us, you know, like leave us with something that we, we can take with us and as, you know, the value from this um, uh, conversation. Sure. So, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about connecting with their heart right? Mm -hmm. And absolutely, you should connect with your heart. However, you connect with your heart with a pillar of 12th dimensional frequency protecting you. And it's always about the combination of the heart and the, the mind, okay? It's a combination of the both, the integration yes. of both, because mm -hmm. not many people understand that when you connect with your heart, you connect with your fourth heart chakra. And unfortunately, the fourth uh, chakra is connected to the astral plane. And the astral plane mm -hmm. is a compromised, distorted reality field. So you must bring in 12th dimensional frequency, combine it with the, 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 the mind or the, let's just say the seventh chakra or the, uh, you know, the, you know, the seventh dimension, so it's 12, seven, and four. Mm -hmm. You must integrate all of that in order to really, really come from the space of true love because true love does not come from the heart chakra alone. It comes from an integration of source, mind, and heart, those mm -hmm. three. So that's what I want to leave, you, leave with you. Yes, and that is truly empowering because that's when you bring that source of knowledge into your heart and that combined together, right? And that's absolutely that's the power. It's our technology inside of us. Wow. Yeah. Well, um, I just want to thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. I feel like there's been this uh, a huge amount that you shared beyond, beyond the words that you actually <laughs> spoken. Um, so many, and definitely there is so much more. Um, but I really want to honor, thank you humbly for being on this on this show. My pleasure. And My pleasure. I, I know that whoever is watching or will be watching will get a tremendous value from this. Um, so um, thank you again, and thank you everybody for watching for being here with us. This is Monica Empower Your Health, Empower Your Life TV, and we are going to be bringing you more uh, incredible speakers. Um, as we go so please stay tuned and um, please use this information and um, bring it into your life and see what happens you know let's empower each other and um, change this world thank, thank you, you so monica much. Thank, thank you thanks to all your listeners okay Beautiful. bye okay thank you bye-bye